TV, channel of God's love. A warm welcome to all our viewers on this episode of Activists of Goa. In this episode, we bring to you Goa's well-known, young, ambitious and multifaceted social activist who has won the hearts of Goans with a sheer dint of hard work and being committed to the cause she takes up in public interest. Besides social activism, she divides her time to give a platform for her creative skills as a dance instructor, an actor, a model and runs a successful dance company, Encore Academy of Performing Arts. She promotes dance education program among students in school during school hours and also creating job opportunities in the field of performing arts. Cecil made Goa and Goans proud when she won the first runners-up place at the ZTV reality sh show, Dance India Dance Super Mom. Something very rare for a Goan to achieve. She has tasted the murky waters of Goan politics, having contested the Goa State Assembly polls twice and is now giving her time for social activism. Goans remember her for the courageous service she rendered during the COVID-19 pandemic. We welcome the trendsetter and passionate social activist Cecil Rodriguez. Welcome you. to our studio, Cecil. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daddy. It's nice to have you here. I know how busy you are and the time that you give for your social activism. Thank you. Cecil, I have known you for a long time and I know what is your field of specialization. Actually speaking, the passion that you have, you know, the different passion that you have for a uh, performing art like dance, you know. And the dance floor has always been a playground sort of for you, am I right? Very true. But how did all this thing begin with you that you finally went on to that, you know, that level at the national? I think so. I should thank my school for that because right from a very young age, uh, we were like, you know, the young uh, dancers and choreographers at that uh, level where the time where YouTube was not there Correct. and you know it was just Durdarshan that we started uh, dancing no other distractions. no other distractions <laughs> were there no other so we should like you know me and my friends we would mm -hmm. like uh, look in front of the TV like practice learn some steps and then get our steps and we were the first girls dance group back then and then from then on it has continued and it has not stopped even now after being a mother so it all started at the school level? At the school level. You were a student of a convent high school, if I'm not yes, mistaken, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. St. Teresa's high, high School, school at Mangor, at Mangor Hill. Hill. Well, now moving from school and your dance right up to the level of social activism. What actually attracted you to social activism? Actually, uh, when I won the reality show, a mm -hmm. uh, lot of Goans supported me, you know, to reach that height because it was impossible to do it alone. As much as I was performing and doing my bit of the hard work and you know working late nights, 20 hours of so, you know hardcore work sometimes, it's a people's votes that got me to that level. So I said how can I contribute back my services okay. back to the community and that's how I joined as a volunteer with Amadmi Party and started working on ground level first okay. as you know going door to door campaigning because I saw some Someone is working towards the children's, like, you know, healthcare, education is what I liked. And that's how I started off. And that's how the social activism and all that thing came yeah, in the long but run. But now, if I may ask you, you said you joined the Aam Admi Party, right? Yes, as you a volunteer. That, as a volunteer. Yes. But what attracted you to a party that was based not in Goa, but at Delhi? Uh, I had a very close uh, friend circle that uh, were really thriving for like, you know, because they also are into performing arts. So they said, Cecil, why don't you come for a meeting and see what 
okay. you know what okay. what they have okay. to you know what they have done for the people and, and at that time I was totally out of like politics so I was uh, like you know doing my bit of helping people but not mm -hmm. like full on I said how can you bring in a change is only when you enter the system correct Absolutely. being an activist you know mm -hmm. the struggles and the fights that we have every day it's like a constant thing but change is not as much as when you're into the system change happens when you enter the system Absolutely. so it is not for anything else but to because of the love of goa okay. and that's why i said i have not moved out of goa i have not not changed my passport right. half three fourth <laughs> of my family is there they are right. all calling right. but mm -hmm. my love and uh, my hard compassion is to be here and that's why i'm here that's, doing what i am that's and that's wonderful wonderful yes. wonderful so in other words from being a mere volunteer with yes. a political party you thought about uh, social activism right yes. that's how it all started yes, yes there was nobody who forced you into it or prodded you into joining that right no 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 it no. was all your own decision yeah i mean i was uh, what uh, 32 33 at mm -hmm. that point of time i mean i was not a child mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. could be you know convinced or brainwashed okay. or or anything uh, you know you, as you know you growing well matured into yes of course i know what life. is right, right i know right. what is wrong i know what is my rights mm -hmm. as a citizen i know i've moved i've gone abroad to work mm -hmm. i've seen the infrastructure abroad i've seen how people get benefits and facilities of the tax that they pay i realize being in goa we pay our tax for everything but we don't get any benefit on top of that our lives are totally at risk uh, people have died people don't get compensated people are in misery and goa right. being a beautiful state uh, you know well loved all over the world and being destroyed every day it's heartbreaking so somewhere something triggered in your mind so to yes. say am i right yes and i think so what people did for me back then i wanted yeah, to give you back to give back to the yes. to the society in yes. return yes. And, and i didn't know i would reach this level of and it and bring about a change by you yourself being in the center of action that's yes. how it is am yeah, i right because you, how you can bring about a change Unless, it's like yeah. you have to get down in, on ground because i have always been a person who uh, i like i can teach in the background dancing you know mm -hmm. i'm always the front person who's yes. doing the dancing <laughs> and i'm getting the team together Correct. and getting everyone together to do and have a good performance mm. so that's me i'm a ground worker i am i love being on ground raising up issues of the common man i hardly that's what you hardly see me doing press conferences mm. sitting at a backdrop i am always on ground whether it's in knee length deep at water or i'm painting yeah. a speed breaker um, i we'll am come on we'll come to that we'll come to that we'll come to I'm that i'm totally on ground sisil as far as i know you had a very flourishing career in you know as a dance uh, instructor as a choreographer when you took up social activism Didn't you find it a little awkward, you know, that this was something out of your domain, out of your, you know, that circle of your uh, the thing activity, creative activity. Didn't you find it a little awkward to raise your voice against some wrongdoing and that too on the public street? Uh, I think so. As a young kid, I've always been vocal. and all my family we've always been vocal i've always been vocal with my family <laughs> whether it is uh, you know uh, with my friend circle what i didn't like i mm -hmm. spoke my heart out what i liked i spoke my heart out mm -hmm. so the freedom of speech i think so at a young age my father gave me like you know sometimes they say sot subeste thonan so you know <laughs> so my father would not retaliate much mm -hmm. and you know it's like i mean that's her opinion and he would always give me that voice and i didn't realize that voice would be so effective today you know what i am doing right now okay. because my father didn't keep me quiet he didn't say you know keep quiet you're not supposed to speak like this mm. or you're not supposed to he gave to the freedom he said that's your opinion he said just be careful in what level i spoke to but if i didn't like something i spoke i don't like it you're correcting me why not why why you're correcting a girl you correct him also he's also a boy why are you correcting me being a girl so i've been like that so you didn't like someone discriminating no openly. i didn't like i mean if you are both of the same age mm -hmm. what is the difference between a boy and a girl we are growing up together mm -hmm. and i being an only child my father's given me the amount of freedom to be the person i am not saying that you know stay back home come home at this particular time even when he said if you're going out because i should do stage was at a very young age right so my father said you know be careful whatever you do keep your family's name always there don't Good. let it get spoiled so i'm in mean, respecting the freedom that i got and respecting uh, the time that 
you know my father allowed me to do what i wanted to do especially dancing because mm-hmm. back then uh, people would tell my parents you know they natsan natsan hoita you know where will dancing take her I see. let her focus on her studies you know let yeah. her stop dancing they, that time dancing was means you're a bad dancer right I'm talking about yeah. 20 years, and I'm right, being very right. open about it. Absolutely, dancing was never given importance. Mm-hmm. You know, dancing is a sport, which people are realizing it now, and dancing is something that keeps you alive, active, fit, gives you the confidence level. Now, if you look back, I think you are feeling very satisfied that you have proved all your critics wrong. Oh my know, God! Right? Yeah, winning that dance reality they must show. Be paying f- to come and watch you perform. <laughs> no, 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 I think so. <laughs> Uh, yeah. reaching that level where you yeah. know many go and you know try to reach there mm-hmm. that was not something that i was hoping to achieve back then i just said i want to work hard and uh, did my best y- at that point of time you said uh, you were always an outspoken girl yes. okay yeah. always opened up and your dad said tonan subeste no no dad huh? never said that okay. people used to tell my dad ah, okay okay <laughs> my dad fine, no fine. no my dad okay. never said fine that. then uh, when you took up social activism at a very on a larger scale you know how was your family were they supportive about your decision uh, actually my mom and dad like are very humble people many of you will be knowing my parents and uh, very quiet soft spoken and sometimes i always wonder how i turned out like this <laughs> so uh, you know the amount of support my father gave me back then you know people used to tell my dad you know takle chedu tumche your only child why you are allowing her to say something against these mlas why you are allowing her mm-hmm. to voice up so vocally you know she'll be put behind bars or she'll be arrested or she can be killed and my father would like calmly come and tell me baba you know what you're doing right and okay. you know the risk factor that is involved i said I told my dad, yeah, Papa. But I said when people fought for Goa's liberation, when uh, people fought for uh, India's independence, a lot of people gave their lives. You know, back then. I mean, here I'm only contributing to raise my voice for my right, and not only for my right, for my for the people's right. So I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not holding a knife in my hand. I'm not threatening someone. I'm not bribing someone. I'm not doing any wrongdoings. Today I don't have any wrongdoings on my part. you know it's always been focusing on what is right and with proof in hand like you know that's why i'd always document where i am mm-hmm. show before show after i'm documenting this so that people even if they put something on me i have valid reasons and proofs to fight my battles on and i told my fa- papa also i said even if something happens to me okay. be proud yeah don't listen to someone else if they say you no know, ah i mean sanglale tuka tika kide jatle why you didn't like you know <laughs> tell her back then be proud okay of anything if it happens to me people have to commit that time you were uh, mentally physically well prepared to face any situation yeah i believe it do dar gaya so mar gaya so dar gaya mar gaya jo dar gaya mar gaya i mean fear is the cause of sickness fear is the cause of diseases fear is the cause of killing yourself way in advance when you have this one life to live live it out to the fullest yes. we don't come at our own will and we don't die at our own will a time is already planned so do what you have to do cecil you worked hard you know with perseverance and you won that title did super super yes. mom okay so when you were into social activism after that did this title help you in any way by way of you know acceptance by the public recognition as by the public for the work that you are doing uh did i think it help you in any way uh, i mean of course i mean uh, back then as you said no i i wanted to give back i because i wanted to give back i wanted to be the voice of the people, people. i yeah. wanted to you know because i was being respected wherever i went back mm-hmm. after i won the reality show people saw me even when i went to buy baji people recognized me so you know moving out from vasco when i moved to taligaon and yeah. that reality show worked for me i started working down on ground level doing ground work people started recognizing mm-hmm. uh, you know the work i started doing and i started getting work done it's just not raising voice and not following up actions you know when i go to a government office today uh, you know i the respect that i get okay cecil is come ma'am what do you want yes. you know will give you the recognition yes. is there if i go to the police station yes. i'm being respected if i go even to you know to an office i'm not treated like an outcast mm-hmm. i am being given because this is this is like hard work to earn a respect in in absolutely, in, in absolutely. goa and it's you not easy it. it's not easy tell how many yes. people have bought laurels to the state 
sports people have uh, bought laurels to the state how many of our elected representatives have bought laurel to the state hardly mm -hmm. because they have the power of money today they can buy votes they can give money and do things because of their money so if they didn't have money you think they would reach anywhere Correct. so it's everything that i do today is basically hard work whether i win an election or i lose an election it's my hard work nothing is being lost there's gain 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 everywhere in this Cecil, now that you are into social activism full time and you know and headlong into it you are always outspoken you will not mince words <laughs> okay uh, have you any time faced that you know fear of getting under pressure from some sources maybe by way of harassment or some indirect threats or some warning sent to you any time have you faced this during the part of uh, course oh my of your god. oh my god that has happened continuously been part of your yes yes people have tried to defame me saying that she's a single mother mm -hmm. if she can't take care of a family how she'll take care of goa i am a very active gram sabha member in my taligaon panchayat i see they have tried to snatch away my mic they have tried to uh, you know lower down mm. the volume because they were not allowing me to speak uh, punch members coming and telling me to shut up on my face saying that I you see. know i will you know you know who you are to baile uh -huh. they called me a baile being from <laughs> vasco you have relocated from vasco yourself into to uh, taligaon and i am being called a baile So what about our elected uh, MLA? Yeah. Where was she born? She is not from Goa. She is from Maharashtra. So she is not violent to you, but a Goan is a violent. And then people doing hush and you know all uh, the uh, I should not say it, but our elected representatives, they are followers. They they come to put somebody down because we are voicing up, and criminal cases being put on us. But you never backed out. For what? You continued your thing. I stood straight front face and I said, "You touch us, and you're a senior person. I'm respecting you." But I said, "If this is a gram sabha, we are gram members, and mm -hmm. we have full right to speak. You're a punch member. You're supposed to sit down there and listen to our queries and answer and them. Answer them. If you don't have an answer, say you'll get back to us. But you don't have the right to stand up, to stand up, and tell me to shut up and call me a uh, call me a baile, an outsider being a goan." so this is the kind of you know uh kind of harassment that they try and they do if you try and raise voice they put a criminal case now it's been 2 years uh, two three citizens are fighting a criminal cases because of a field issue in our very own taligaon back to back harassment this is harassing this is just to common discourage you from maybe of course they don't want them. us they don't want us to get work because i do a lot of work sometimes i have to travel abroad to do work so my passport might not get renewed and it's happening right now because of the criminal cases okay. but i'm not scared i'm still there fighting i'm still there voicing and i'm sure people also should not be afraid if you're on the right track you fight your battles today as a social activist and the trend of the change in the socio political uh, field you know goa is changing a lot today oh my god what is the biggest challenge for a social activist today in goa uh i think so we could say is uh, people coming out and supporting uh, social activists sometimes i am one person raising up a voice mm. but it is concerning my village right. how many people come out saying that are this sarke holeta let's give her that support you have not come across it is such people it's very handful mm -hmm. i can say 15 20 but when there is a situation happening uh road collapsing fields are being filled uh, hills are being cut why are people not coming out and showing their support in numbers how back in the day like if you go to see south goa people come any problem wangda uh, lo kehta like 15 20 people of the same village will come out okay. and and stand today people will face like in taligaon and panjim you see horrible roads every day every day there's a accident and every day there's an issue talking about roads <laughs> that uh, that reminds me of at another social issue that you took up a campaign other with that catchy name you know #rostog #rostog goa #rostog #rostog goa can you tell us something what inspired you to go on a such an kind of a hi-fi uh, 
campaign. campaign. For the roads. I think so. People might be fed up of me answering, but I always feel happy to say this. You know how this campaign started. I think so. When you reach a point of frustration mm -hmm. as a citizen, uh, you say like you know enough is enough. Now it's high time I use my artwork yeah. and. Uh, bring something to light where i bring different performing arts you know people together collaborate and put something up and that's how the rasta song, song came song because came. of the bad conditions of the road back in uh, 2019 it was horrible back then our bus stand was bad yeah. going to mabsa was bad There's going to uh, benauli that YouTube whole kortale oh my you god you sitting in that big uh, puddle of yeah, water yeah 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 being being the showing things. the tourists are yes, not coming yes. for the beach now but they're coming for the potholes oh, yes. and raising up you know making two songs which went viral did a road t-shirt mm -hmm. campaign did a speed breaker 300 speed breakers and less than uh, three months is not a joke. It takes almost an hour to paint one speed breaker. Yes. Late nights right. and you know people the appreciating. That is moving, you have and we would do it like 7:30 in the evening till 4:30. 4:35 in the morning, mm -hmm. Daniel. Vasco was the highest. 21 speed breakers from 7:30 in the morning till 4:30 so in the morning. So you gave something back to your town where you grew yes, up. Yes, Goa, <laughs> go. I mean, gave back. Besides all, all other parts over of Goa, Goa. yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So back. you didn't forget Vasco. No, no, no. I had to go back, and I had like a big group of youth which came dancing. Says, we are yeah, there yes. if you're coming to Vasco. So then I made a big but group. And at the it. end of all this, have you achieved what? That I mean, whatever you had in mind and you were trying to promote as far as the Rostov campaign was concerned. I Have think so. Of course, of course. The speed breakers that I painted, mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, you know, 90% of it, the panchayat or the municipality got it painted. Because I just don't paint markings like the speed breaker marking. Mm -hmm. I write hashtag Rostov Goa. Yes. For the reason is... That made a that, big difference. Yes, because you know what? A lot of people, local, they paint and then a panchayat doesn't act on it. They leave it as it is. But the moment you put like a name on it, like my, it's like branding. It's a branding and that was a road uh, campaign right. of, you know, road safety campaign for me. Like my freedom of like, you know, for mm -hmm. safer roads. Mm -hmm. Because I have a metal plate in my back because of an unpainted speed breaker. So I am a victim okay. of an unpainted speed breaker. I have seen my dear friends die right. because of a pothole. I've seen friends, friends pass away and not only that lot of people have lost their lives or have injured themselves or have damaged their vehicles. In the absence of a painting of the speed yes, breaker. Yes, unpainted, unpainted speed breaker, yeah. potholes left unaided. Like road safety is the least importance that is given uh, by the government. It's Having done so much of. for road safety and the roads and the speed breakers, from a uh, social activist point of view, what would you say today f uh, to the rising number of road accidents and the fatalities that we have in Goa? I think so when I look today's scenario and moving around, roaming around, seeing the situation, two sectors are to be blamed. One is when you look at the PWD government side, mm -hmm. like not taking action or like all the government, whether it's a panchayat, municipality, PWD, not acting on it, not make, making sure that quality work goes in, no commissions being taken and you know long lasting roads are maintained. That is one section of it. There, where there's a will, mm. there, is a, there way. is a way. There is a way. That is the government fund where they have to do their duty. Mm. And if they are not doing their duty on time, then you can see the result what is happening right now. Secondly is public. How much of the public are following rules and regulations? How much of the public are following signages where they say it's one way and then, right. you know, they uh, go the other way. How many right. of them are not wearing their seat belts? How many of them are not wearing their helmets? How many youngsters who go to college are on their e-bikes mm -hmm. not wearing helmets? And 12-year-old, 13-year-old riding bikes uh, on, on streets because, uh, you know, their parents are out to work or the bike is there, they take the bike and they're on and they're zooming away. Cicil, so these are the two factors yeah. that you know have to work together to make life Actually better. Actually having pinpointed the two crucial uh, points of this road yes. accidents that can cause into a fatal road accident, uh, do you have any future plans sort of to start season two of uh, hashtag Rostock campaign? I think so. You know, highlighting <laughs> road accidents because you know the youth can uh, really have a change of mind. You know if back a young activists like yeah. you come out and 
yeah back in the day when growing up i never knew i would be really taking up these issues right now and it just happened in the course of my mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. that you know things are happening from road it went to fields from mm-hmm. fields mm-hmm. it went to healthcare from healthcare like name the issue and we are trying to raise it up this has happened in a course of time and one thing that really stuck to my heart is road safety yes. like you know that has been the epic samne people say ki the raste raste kutta ani ek us topic hate ka but people don't know i am a victim i am yes. a victim of it i have lost dear ones i i am i've got uh, you know stitches in my back if you only see it's like a branch because a piece of my hip has been taken and put and it's a metal plate inside and what i could do 100 times i can't do that and you all can't realize that you all think i'm a very 100% active person who can do stunts i can't do full i have little bit handicap when it comes to my 100% output of my dancing but at you want to yes do i do i'm doing it daniel because i'm doing it you have because you have been a victim of this yes, and you have gone through the suffering yes, you know what it means day to, to day. be a victim of it accident is, yeah and i said enough is enough i said if i have to lose my life raising up my voice in and to highlight certain thing i will do it if i have to do a court case i will fund a thing because if you are financially strong daniel you can do anything right. but when you are not financially strong you have to balance your social activism you have to balance your work you have to get crowd funding to f- do things you have to get people together you have to get like minded mm-hmm. like whether it's an advocate it's a doctor it's an engineer it's an architect it's a person like me who's a passionate social worker everyone together brainstorm and do things for the community because if we love our goa now we say going car pond we love our goa you can't be a going car pond on social media you have to be there on ground you have to be there standing beside someone who is raising right, say i will stand right. if you don't have a voice be beside someone you know you're my thing like ana this mla will look at me to maka poitalo i will get hairs they beyond beyond this kadit jale arnu you will not reach anywhere and then will time you come will you will life. die and you'll go in your <laughs> grave in that fear yeah. so still having uh, you know told us so many things about you being the victim of road accidents and and the manner in which you have been going with this campaign rosto a hashtag rosto i think it's a big gesture on your part you know a magnanimous gesture i should say because you have suffered oh and you God. don't want other innocent victims to suffer When you lose a family life, Daniel, you, you, you know what, you know is, what the loss what is. is. When you know there's a handicapped person in your house, you know the loss. So you are a very courageous young lady, and this courage you have displayed during the COVID-19 pandemic, and I know your family has also suffered yeah. during the COVID-19 pandemic. You lost your dear beloved dad. Yes. What are the lessons that you have learned from this? uh i think so that that was one of goa's you know, know. not so pleasant chapter in goa's history like that covid-19 pandemic times very true it and was and you were in the in thick of phase, action yeah. oh my what god what have you learned from this i think so human beings are not given respect you know we are treated like dirt we are uh, though we are tax payers uh, you know wherever we may be we are not treated with respect and mm. and if you're a poor person to i feel very sorry to say but you know you're just treated like dirt thing a rao thing a boss thing a what thing a nide rao a sangta tuka can i you pak jay okay i know when i was recording i had five security guards who came trying to snatch my phone away and i started shouting and i started yelling and i i, I also started crying Sorry, I'll get emotional. Mm, 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 mm. My mom and dad were in the hospital, and I had to document this because I had to show the reality. What's happening actually on the ground? Yes. Way. Yes. Not only me, the amount of family members that were dying on the right hand side, that were dying on the left hand side, was not easy, Daniel. Sorry, I'm getting very emotional here, but it is not easy as a young. only child i had to keep my son at a family friend's place my mother is one ward my father is in the icu yes. and it has been one of the terrible experience and the people who were there with me whose family members were there they stood by me when the security people came i told them i said i will stand and i will voice up but i said i need your backing they didn't give us hot water 
they didn't give us connection to charge mobile they were not allowing members to come on top how could we relieve there was no canteen in the new block we couldn't get food up i think this was the most testing time of your life if i may say it right my god and they kept family members out the people who were inside were scared i've seen mask fall off i've seen my father in the morning not have his you know the thick bed sheets on his feet he was exposed when in the night i had closed his feet and he couldn't move couldn't move and he went cold for 20 minutes i thought i lost him before that time sisal if i may come in here i think having gone through all this type things you know we everything of yours was put to test and you have come out as a more stronger my lady, god right it's you have come out more stronger yeah, yeah, yeah. and more courageous it is it is the battles that you face in life every day daniel that makes you whether you're on that reality show everyone would see wow cecil is doing great job every day i was crying because either i was having a back pain either i was having a muscle pull either i was having a blood clot either i was missing my family i was like 5 months out of home then the pandemic every day was a fight because i couldn't go home i was the only child i didn't have anyone to replace me family members and friends my friends came to support but family members couldn't come and relieve me back in the time because mm. there was no help yes. and I, not like me but so many other family members can connect with me today because they know how they struggled every day and i don't even wish for my enemies to have go through such, go a, situation. Through such a situation, situation. and treated like you know when you can you want to save your dear ones but but it's just not you know, in your hand sasil you have achieved so much in this very short span of time perhaps you have not even imagined like it you know where you started and where you are today yeah it needs certain kind of empowerment do you believe in women empowerment oh yes i i totally believe you know that and you support the cause of course yes of course B- uh, by way of your activism do you do any kind of awareness among the women uh i think so so that they are empowered i think so as a woman myself mm. you know when we go down on ground level and we raise up issues we try and get a lot of youngsters on board you know right now to raise up issues because this is very important because as much as like you know being a woman being a mother we understand situations we understand the reality we understand what is lacking we understand where we have a voice we understand where we don't have a voice sometimes we are not treated equally mm-hmm. you know a girl is called home early but a boy has full liberty so you know being a woman myself i feel that when women are empowered lots more things can happen and this is why we always strive to get more people on board but as i as you know no baba puta tinga wasnaka tinga konnaka kontuka ok e kotele kontuka ok kotolo they will harass you they will trouble you they will do this thing fear is created way if my father had created that kind of a bubble for me mm. i would have not been the person i am because my father didn't create that bubble and always kept me vocal yes at my you know raising up what i had to do that's why i am what i am today but that perspective has to change from a parent that perspective has to change you back know home. back home it is you giving that empowerment to your girl child we say you no know, i have a daughter moga che chedu you know she is our lakshmi she is our thing but if this lakshmi remains at home only how will that lakshmi shine how will that little girl who is so timid but when she gets married she goes into another home how will she uh, you know shine over there it's not just cooking and teaching a how to do household work but it is how to stand up for herself how to work how to uh, support her husband in terms of you know bringing equal income raising up a child being that support system raising up also uh, social issues being part of the panchayat being part of community service it is each one's responsibility not back in the school days where we used to do you know uh, that um, go to house to house and do some social work yes. get paid 10 rupees Correct. you remember bobber job bobber jobs <laughs> bobber jobs bobber job you know and you would get paid for it today where that is no. that is all stopped 
because everyone is protected and cases also have increased mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. i don't say that things have been the same today parents are scared people are scared even to send their children by bus or by local transport that's why most of the parents are dropping their daughters to school so we need to empower and empowerment happens at home okay right at home at within home. the four walls at home as much as i try to get women but it has to be have you any time realized that for many reasons you know you are seen as a role model for the prospective young educated activist would you uh, actually encourage the youngsters to take this route of social activism uh, of course i mean uh, when you reside in a place or your surroundings and you see things are not happening right and i think so as a citizen you have to know your rights mm-hmm. if you want a clean house you will clean your house right either you'll get a maid or you'll get a broom and start cleaning but if you want to see your surrounding clean what do you do either you start a cleanliness campaign drive or you write a letter to your panchayat and get that activated done or you take up public causes and if it doesn't go then you start raising issues then you do global then you sorry from uh, from your local level you go uh, level. go to your uh, th- constituency level then you go state level and then you might reach national level so our youngsters today are the present and the future of our world you know because we are getting old we need to give the baton to youngsters so you know can you still have time for that i suppose yeah yeah of course i mean i'm turning <laughs> gray i'm turning old. gray i'm okay. turning gray yeah. but i feel youngsters if they take up this causes and i think so if i elected representatives also give opportunities to youngsters to be young uh, leaders you know because they study they are fresh out of college they know Correct. all their uh, their laws the rules you know regulation if you give them an opportunity to be young leaders where there are also senior leaders and have like a mixture mm-hmm. you'll have young people working on ground level because you see so many youngsters they work 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 on ground but when they when it's time for them to stand for election there's no one who supports there's them there's no one to support them give them an opportunity everyone has you know every election is held every 5 years mm-hmm. whether it's panchayat elections no, it whether it is a general tendency you know our leaders fail to build up the second line of leadership yeah. it's it's happening everywhere it's not yes. in the political field in all other organizations the true. second line of leadership is not built with that Yeah mind. and you as your question says educated activist yes today I is education activist today is education given importance when you are standing as a candidate is that a criteria what qualification you have what all social work have you done for the people how much have you contributed to your uh, state have you brought laurels to your state is that any time given so a young act, a young educated activist should not feel disheartened you know all that mm-hmm. i can say don't feel disheartened do it because you have the will to do it do it because you're passionate about it do it because you love your place you love your state don't do it to achieve anything if you think it's not happening and you feel you have to enter the system to be the change then so be it like what i am doing and i'm like 41 right now i'm still thriving i don't know how long i will take to be in the system but i'm not giving up hope i am going to like do my work Uh, tirelessly Fight i will out. yeah i will do my work what i need to do for uh, for my people sasil i've i'm reminded of another campaign that you started you know and you raised your voice uh, with conviction against the destructions of fields in taligaon yes when you did that was this a move to build a political platform for for you in that constituency because soon thereafter you have contested the state elections In 2017 actually I fought you know uh, assembly elections after that I started being on ground I started doing the rosto campaign mm-hmm. after the rosto campaign then I was asked to stand for the zilla panchayat elections and that time in 2019 I had uh, given my you know I decided to stand because it was a, a woman seat in taligaon uh, panchayat so i was fighting that uh, actually i was campaigning during that painting my speed breakers campaigning uh, during that time and then the pandemic happened mm-hmm. from the pandemic happened this field issue happened okay so i'm giving you a course so everything was interconnected sort I, of. i'm giving you a course that mm-hmm. as your question was asked whether i did it for my political gains it was not at all not at because all. i was already in that 
process of my hashtag Ross to go. I was painting mm-hmm. speed breakers. I was already an activity vocal known. My videos went viral before that. I I was standing for the ZP elections, and then this thing happened. So it's the farmers who called me, and called me up. It happened in the night, the previous night where the wall was broken and debris were dumped in ploughed fields. It's a curse. Okay. It's a curse, for, you know. A farmer will curse that person or the politician who has done something like that. You have put dirt on their the food. Field. You have put yeah. dirt. You have destroyed. You have cut out their food. You have cut out their food. Eight fields. It's not a joke. And you've covered up with debris and mud, and then you put a criminal case on us. That's a criminal case I was talking about, okay. where the serpent put it on us By the way, for raising our voice. Do you believe that social activism, for many, is a stepping stone for hidden political ambitions? Uh, it depends on everyone, because unless you do social work, uh, people don't recognize you. Mm-hmm. And when you keep doing social work and you realize that things are not. Changing hundred percent, then sometimes you want to enter into the system, and why not? Everyone should have. Is there a criteria that saying that oh, only when you do this you can be a candidate? No. If you have done your social work, if your heart is clean, if you if you are committed to your state, if you are mm-hmm. committed to your village, if you are committed to your constituency, and you want to bring in the change, and I feel that it's left up to the people. It's all left up to the people who to elect. I might have money, okay. or I might not have money. I don't have money. Personally, saying I don't have the money to pay somebody to win an election, saying that you know I'm giving you two thousand for a vote. I've gone to people's house. I said I'm sorry when people have asked me this. To kitle pe kotte le. Magar en tin electoral uh, slip sasa. People have asked me this. I said I'm sorry. I'm fighting against corruption. Correct. If I bribe you, that means I'm being corrupt first, and corruption starts from there. And when they give cash, is that white money or is that black money? If it's black money, that's corruption money. So people should realize this first. You know. Now, Cecil, moving from that political topic, I'm bringing you back to social activism. Yeah. Has your social activism? And now you're fully into it, involved with so many issues across Goa. Has it at any point of time hindered the progression of your own career as a, a dance instructor, as a choreographer, and so many other things that you do, including modeling? Ah, uh, of course it does. It yes, it, it is. It, it does. It is. Uh, it, see, it's making an impact. Of course, there. when you uh, raise your voice, not everyone will like you. Mm-hmm. Uh, not. Uh, everyone will give you work. Not everyone will want you close. Mm-mm-mm. So it is. Uh, it is not easy. It is not easy because I have also lost a lot of work. But is has that stopped me from doing what I want? I have. Uh, I have not reached my bank balance. Might have not been full. But has it made me happy and satisfied to where I am right now? Hundred percent, Daniel. I am satisfied with the little work I have. I don't have the greed to take up more work. You are not giving me work because you have this this clause because I belong to somewhere mm-hmm. or because I have raised this issue mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. I have done something like this. So be it. It But is not my loss. It's your loss. It's your loss. You don't want me to be involved with your work. It is not my loss. My my gains are there. I if not you, I will have somebody else to go and approach my work. And you are happy with what you are doing. My God, Daniel, yeah. I am very very satisfied. At the I end mean, of the day, you I, know that you have done something good and positive. I have not positive. done anything bad in my life. I have not taken a bribe. I have not killed someone for work. I have not, uh, uh, you know, said bad things hmm. to somebody and got work. You know, so I have done my bit of mine in sincerity. Cecil, DID super mom. Now you are into social activism, and you know you call the shots everywhere, wherever you go. I don't the call issue. the shots. <laughs> <laughs> I I support so many. Heard. I support so many <laughs> activists, and I okay. be part of campaigns uh, too. You are to me a celebrity in your own right. You know, at Thank the you. moment. Thank you. Are there any goals remaining to be achieved? 
as far as your social activism is concerned? Uh, you know, uh, some of my friends tell me, Cecil, what is your aim in life? And, you know, my aim was always to be like that dancer who is always respected because mm. growing up, people told me like, you know, dancing will not take me anywhere. And because of that, I said, I will bring up the name of dancing. I will make sure that, you know, dancing is respect as a performing arts. You change the whole perspective. I want to change that perspective. And that was, that is my goal and that goal is on. That's why, as you have introduced me, I'm the founder member of Encore Academy of Performing yes. Arts. All right. I'm giving youngsters an opportunity who are passionate about dancing, who might not be good at, you know, at their books, but might be good at their hands and their feet and the you know for year for music and if they have that ability we are you know hiring i'm creating job opportunities people crising no jobs i am doing that you know and i've got good people who have come on board i have good friends who are part of this and uh, we are taking this ahead it's 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 a struggle it's not easy it's a it's every day is a step but all that i can say daniel is is what we do you know when you do things sincere sincerely sincerely people are watching us. I don't have anything fake to show. And when people, I use social media. So people see, I don't use social media to look good, to look fancy, to show which is the latest makeup. You know, I, I support goans. I support dancing. I support my social work. And I will promote anyone who's passionate about performing. You arts. just said you support goans. Yes. One last question. We have run out of time. Oh my but gosh. One, <laughs> one last question. And a quick and a short answer to it. Yes. As a social activist, what is your vision for Goa? Uh, I think so. Looking at all the viewers who are watching this episode, I can say is do not fear. You know, do not fear because I, growing up, didn't realize that I would be termed as an activist. Today I'm here as an interview as an activist, but growing up I never thought I would be one. People who are watching this, you have this one life and you have to live it to the fullest. If you live in fear, your life is lost. Make sure you're giving it your 100% to Goa. Make sure you're raising up your children. You are telling people on your right, on your left about how we should be the voice to protect what is left. Be responsible citizens and, uh, you know, correct people when they are doing wrong. Do not get scared. All that I can say is, you know, life is to be lived to the fullest. And when you go back to sleep in the night that you have done something beautiful, you have made somebody smile, you have changed, you're changing the world some way, little by little in your good deeds. I think so. this is what message I would like to give everyone is do good in life and be happy and do not fear. Thank you very much, Cecil. That Thank was you, a Daniel. beautiful message you have Thank given you. to all <laughs> our viewers on this channel. Thank you. So that was Cecil Rodericks. I should say she has spoken straight from her heart and very sincerely. That sincerity was there on her face. She has worked hard to be where she is today and she really has a goal in mind for our beautiful Goa. Keep watching your favorite channel, the CCR TV channel. Thank you.